So now in this video, we come back to this circuit. We'll zoom in and get a closer look uh, coming up. But there is the schematic diagram. Right now I have 3.6 volts to the rail. When I get up to uh, pretty much spot on 9 volts, no lower than 9 volts though, the LED starts flashing. It starts flashing kind of slow. Might call it a strobe too. And I'll turn it up to about 9.5 and about 10 volts. You can see it goes faster. The uh, higher the voltage I put on there so let's uh, I'm gonna put the voltage below where the LED flashes and there's the schematic but we'll zoom in and uh, pop the capacitor out you can see we got a resistor to the positive rail that's going to the emitter of the transistor this is going to an oscilloscope we'll look at that coming up and uh, so we got the emitter is the top pin of the transistor there middle pin the base we're not going to connect anything we're just going to leave it on that row all by itself and then we have an LED of course LEDs only conduct in one direction we got positive coming to there so long lead the anode to the collector of the transistor short lead the cathode to ground now the transistor is backwards from uh, probably every other circuit I've seen it in so we are taking advantage of the fact that it doesn't stay off very good when you accidentally put it in backwards and I don't have a better way to explain that hopefully I will uh, later on so in any case let's return the capacitor it is polarized this side has to be more negative than that side so it's indicated by the curve line of the schematic diagram we just put that directly to the negative rail and uh, then we can never get a lower voltage than uh, zero volts across the uh, capacitor. So that goes again where the uh, resistor is. I shouldn't have zoomed back yet. And the emitter right there. So there we go. But there is the schematic. So we are going to slide over this uh, pocket oscilloscope there and kind of zoom in. So to begin with, we're going to look, we can look at the voltage of the rail if we want. We could put it there. And so each square is 2 volts. So 2, 4, 6, 8, about 8 volts. That's why the LED is not uh, blinking. So I'm going to go about 9. You see we get about halfway up a square. And you can see now the LED is flashing. So that's not terribly interesting. We were able to look at that with a multimeter. And looking at a steady voltage, it's kind of easier to see what's going on with a multimeter. So now we're going to go to where the capacitor, the emitter of the transistor, and the resistor come together. That is much more interesting. So there we go. You can see the waveform. So the capacitor is charging to about, uh, or yeah, charging to about 8, looks like 9 volts almost, and then dropping down to 8. That's uh, what it looks like there. And so it's uh, a sawtooth. You can see it's going up in voltage and then suddenly it goes down. So now I'm going to turn the voltage up. I will just, it uh, looks like it's probably about 9.1 now. I will go to about 10 right there. You can see it's going faster. So more currents going through the resistor. It's charging the capacitor faster. But once it hits a certain voltage, then the uh, transistor conducts, the LED lights up and the capacitor discharges to that lower voltage and so the higher voltage we get more current goes through the the resistor to charge the capacitor but again it's the same voltages that the capacitor is charging up to and discharging so it's not fully discharging it's just discharging a little bit till the transistor stops conducting so now we're going to look at another thing and this has come up in the comment section and uh, it's actually a really interesting circuit, so I'm glad these uh, comments came up. But you can see here, I have a bunch of different uh, color LEDs there. They're just sitting there. The yeah, black probe for the oscilloscope, by the way. I have it over here connected to the negative rail. They have alligator clips at the end of the cable there. And so the red probe I just uh, clipped to this. I took alligator clips and crimped them to wires. Uh, just jumper wires and they work really nice in my opinion I suggest uh, 
doing that. So in any case, we have the blue or the red LED. So blue LED came up and another uh, one of my uh, normal viewers, I saw him using a green LED in his circuit. So we will do those first. Let's do, uh, let's do blue. So we just saw red right there and we will go to blue. So remember each square here is uh, two volts per division. So now the capacitor is charged up to uh, to what it was, and uh, yeah, it looks like it's at the nine volts that we have the uh, power supply to. It's not flashing though, so I'll turn it up, and I've noticed. So this is probably about ten volts. Uh, now we have the flash there, and you can see the uh, waveform. If I turn it up to eleven you can see uh, how much faster it's going. You can see the waveform there. So, I've noticed the blue LED needs about a volt more before it will conduct. So not only do we have to get the transistor to start conducting, but also the LED. So the LED is adding to the uh, voltage. And I didn't think to do this. Okay, I do have a straight wire. Let's uh, yank the uh, LEDs out all together so we have about 11 volts this is a 1 kilo ohm resistor so probably about the uh, most voltage we want to do is 12 volts but remember also the uh, LED is blocking some voltage so when we go down there you see the waveform but now it is uh, what 1, 2, about 2.5 volts less than it uh, was when the uh, blue LED was flashing Probably about one and a half volts less than when the uh, red LED was flashed. Probably. These are not exact numbers, just estimation. But you can see the uh, the LED that you use or any other semiconductive component. And there you can see the capacitor charge up will add to it. So let's also do green right there. So green should be uh, voltage wise, I think about the same as blue. I think that's going a lot faster though. It's. Uh, it's just a little bit under 11 volts. Let's uh, yank the green one, put the blue one back. And so, yeah, the color LED you're using, yeah, I think that's going about half, half the speed. The color LED you're using makes a difference. So now let's go with yellow. Yellow should be about the same as the red one. So I bet we can lower the voltage to 9 volts. So it's a little less than 11 now. Let's go down to uh, 9 volts at the uh, rail. So about 9 volts there. And there you can see it's probably about the same as red. There might be some differences. But yeah, these are good differences to look at. These are electrical properties. Ultimately, uh, what the circuit is doing, looks like it's going a little bit faster. What the circuit is doing, of course, you got to make circuits to do interesting things. So. Of course, it's good to learn how to make circuits that do interesting things. But the main thing to be learning is actually electrical properties of the components. That's what you should be uh, focusing on because once you know the electrical properties, then you can come up with ideas for using the components that you haven't been uh, shown yourself. So, this is a white LED. i got to raise the voltage. And... Uh, I am at uh, probably a spec below 10 volts because of my power supply. There's some resistance in the wires when you get to the circuit. So if I set it to 10 volts exactly, it's kind of a voltage divider effect where the voltage you see at the load is uh, slightly lower than what the bench power supply is. But in any case, it's about spot on 10 volts. And so the uh, white LED, the blue LED, I did a video on this earlier, and the green LED, they all take more voltage for them to conduct while they are forward biased. Of course, they're diodes, like any other type of diode, other than they light up. So they're kind of better than other diodes, but I can put it backwards, and it's working as a diode. But when uh, even rectifier diodes and even shot key diodes, they take some voltage to conduct even while forward biased but it's much lower and uh, it's extremely lower for those type of diodes whereas LEDs I don't think they block a ton of voltage when you put them in backwards but there you can see we were dealing with uh, 10 volts 
and it was still blocking the uh, voltage and so blocking current at that so we got that out of the way um, I think that was about it what we can also do is go to the other side of the transistor and look at the voltage of the uh, diode so actually it's holding I thought it was going to go to uh, zero volts but uh, when it's off but it's actually holding up to the forward voltage right there so that may be capacitive effects of the transistor that's interesting I didn't expect that so that is for the white one I'm guessing we'll get about the same for the blue or green and uh, let's just throw blue in there I think that's a little more common than green and uh, no or yeah there now we kinda see a, a spike once in a while no we don't see as much of a spike we see them occasionally so that's interesting it seems a little less predictable than uh, the white one let's try the red one so yeah, I've never done this before and uh, these are interesting things so yeah the uh, the red one also okay it's kinda interesting so we got two two pulses without okay now it got a little more steady so it must have just been uh, just kind of a random random pattern that repeated itself but every once in a while you got a kind of high voltage spike and then the other ones it's it's a little more uh, stable right there so yeah that's kind of interesting so I think that's about it for uh, this video uh, this is kind of a fun circuit and uh, all kinds of interesting things easy, of course it's easy to put together kind of easy to understand when the uh, collector is more positive than the emitter it's made to block a high amount of voltage but you put it in backwards it's really easy to break down the emitter when the emitter is more positive than the base it's really easy to break that down and then it will continue conducting through the component so it's uh, it looks like for the red LED we'll hit that point at 9 volts across the uh, well transistor and the LED with the red LED and so probably probably about us uh, I'm guessing 7 volts across the transistor which we can actually we can actually measure that so let's see how much voltage is actually across the transistor so there is another measurement we could do this with the multimeter too. So remember each square here is two volts. I have the zero point right there. So two, four, six, and then so yeah, about seven. Looks like it's bouncing, I don't know, like seven and a half and uh a little above seven and a half, a little or down to seven and a half. So it looks like about that range. So that looks like that's the voltage where the transistor is breaking down because it's inserted backwards. If you put a signal to the load or to the base I mean if you put a negative signal to the base I think that would turn it off so I don't have a I do have a resistor floating around here let's see if I can uh, give that a negative sig signal so that is just uh, it's kind of crowded here this is just kind of another we're just gonna get a steady glow because there's a steady current going through the resistor in the LED. So I stuck it to the negative rail. You can see that turned it off. So I mean you can turn it off. That's how the transistor works. It's a P-type material in the middle. So you put an, a negative, more negative charge to it. That's going to help keep the transistor off. So a lot of times when you have accidentally put a transistor in backwards, it may seem to be working perfectly fine. But uh, it will be when you do uh, hit the extreme extremes of the circuit that it will fail where as a properly connected transistor won't so hope you found that all interesting I'm gonna try or I'm gonna start a web page for this topic and uh, hopefully uh, update it over time with more relevant information right now this is a new circuit for me it's really interesting one though and a lot of people seem to really like it so I'll uh, try to get my updates on that page and get better at explaining it and try to more professionally explain it someday but uh, in any case even playing around with the oscilloscope and whatnot all kinds of other stuff 
it's a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.